a spoon in the eye. An old vaudeville routine has a clown repeatedly drinking coffee from a mug with a spoon stuck in it. Each time he sips the coffee, he pokes himself in the eye. His buddy remarks that he drinks a lot of coffee and asks if it keeps him up at night. The clown replies, no, but it sure gives me a pain in the right eye. The sight gag is funny because the solution is right in front of the clown's eye, literally. And the discussion is focused on something that's just a diversion, coffee. Municipal crisis plans are often like this. The solution is right in front of the writer's eye, and the problem is not exactly what the writer thought it was. Uh, take a few examples from the City of Baltimore's plan, chosen at random from a hundred or so plans I'm reading for a new book called Safer Cities of the Future. On page 18, the hazard of extreme heat is discussed. This regular condition is exacerbated by, quote, large, uninterrupted stretches of hardscape, sidewalks, buildings, streets, etc. Because that makes downtown hotter than surrounding areas, this condition occurs, quote, nearly every summer. Later, on page 39, the solution is noted to green Baltimore with trees, grass, and so on. The vaudeville spoon in the eye, sort of, is that on page 7 of the plan, readers have already been told that seven federal disaster declarations for Baltimore have involved excess water, mostly flooding, but often winter storms, which can also cause flooding through melting snow and runoff. The solution to flooding is partly soft surfaces that will absorb water, the same means of addressing extreme heat. I advocate slow-growing grass and trees that don't need much water. Even parking lots can be made from honeycomb tiles with slow-growing grass in between so runoff doesn't overload storm sewers. Back on page 18, in the extreme heat, Baltimore draws on its history. Older residents remember sleeping out on rooftops or in city parks to obtain relief from the heat. Today, these options are seen by residents in most of Baltimore as unsafe, the plan says. Well, there's another spoon in the eye. Why not make sleeping outdoors and on rooftops safe? In 1962, the Drifters had a hit song with Up on the Roof, reprised by James Taylor a while later. Being up on the roof must have been safe even recently. It was also romantic, but that's another column and not primarily a municipal issue. What if the city had a grant program or promotional campaign to install safe access to rooftops with railings, shrubs, and grass? This wouldn't work in all buildings, but where it did, the vegetation would dissipate heat, soak up excess water, and be a safe place for residents of that building to have a barbecue, sing doo-wop songs, or even sleep at night. What if the city had a summer sleepover campaign involving the Boy and Girl Scouts? Several weekends could be designated for pitching tents and sleeping under supervision, including with parents. The police could patrol. City services like medical, public works, fire, and others could have displays that appeal to the Boy and Girl Scouts' ethics of being prepared. This program would allow the average citizen to take back their parks in a controlled and safe way. Then, in a heat emergency, vulnerable people could get a respite in their parks safely. In fact, if the use of air conditioners was threatening to cause a brown or blackout, the city could invoke summer sleepover and even start it at noon on Friday or give the kids a whole day off to take the pressure off home and school air conditioning systems. I bet if you download your municipal crisis plan, you'll find solutions woven into the problems. Unweave and be safe.